Shit, what's this podcast called? Discourse of Human Events. The, the discourse is just crazy, crazy, crazy. Everything's okay, I'm just trying to wag my age. Yeah, I wanna know. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three, flashlight! <laughs> We're talking about Tosh.0. <laughs> uh-huh. We're talking about Tosh.0 and the guy that eats anything. And, like, so he's just a very obscure guy on YouTube that has, like, 50 views or whatever. He ate, like, human hair. And the funny thing is, the moron, like, ate a tampon and almost choked to death. The fuck? But he, he had the string, right? The little string. Oh, that's what saved him? Yeah, because it expands when, you know, moisture, right? Yeah. So it went into his throat, expanded, he couldn't oh, breathe, no. and he had to yank the goddamn thing out. <laughs> Why on earth? The funny thing is this guy was married somehow. Maybe this... talking no. about his, yeah, his divorce with his wife because she couldn't put up with it. Like, who married the guy like that in the first yeah, place? Yeah, how did, did you not, did this like not come up before marriage? So did he just like like really dry stuff in his mouth? It was anything. He'd eat bugs, anything. He just had a weird He's obsession with eating weird shit. Mm-hmm. And he has a YouTube video where he'll eat anything. Dude, that's so weird. You know what that reminds me of? Yeah. I, I was listening to this podcast, uh, Dick Masterson. And, uh... Mm-hmm. This dude came on and was telling a story about how he was uh, doing blow with this chick, and the chick wanted to go back to her place so they, you know, they could do it, right? Well, he goes back mm-hmm. to their house, and there's a guy there, and so he's kind of like, "What the hell's going on?" Like, because it looked like a boyfriend or something. And so the guy kind of yeah. tells him, "Like, I bet you're wondering what's going on." So what's happening is like, I can't get it up because of an accident or something, so he can't get hard. So, he's oh, wow. like, but I get turned on by this chick, and I want you to have sex with her, and I'll pay you to have sex with her. And he's like, I'm in, right? Mm-hmm. So, he's doing this chick, and the guy's watching, and the dude that's doing the chick, like, notices the guy's doing something while he's having sex with her. And he's noticing that he's, like, not snorting something. So, he keeps looking, and he just had, like, poop and was sniffing it while he was watching them. And the learn that the dude had a weird fetish where he would, like, literally have bags of this girl's poop written on, like, what she ate and stuff for, like, okay, then. each poop. And, like, he had a lot of other weird, weird fetishes because he couldn't get it up. So he just had these, like, weird, weird things that would, like, really turn it Sounds him on. made up. It, it was much more detailed than that. I will grant you it could be made up, but the detail he gave made it much more like as super creepy. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. They say that about liars that they give more detail. That's than true. Need. That's true. That's that's what makes me go. I don't know. You're not wrong. And as he lent in to the, <laughs> I could hear the crinkling of the bag as he. <laughs> Wondering what this precarious thing was. <laughs> like, like, no one does okay, that. Okay, he didn't t- say it like it was Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> he told it in little couplets. The to whole sniff story. the poo or not sniff the poo. Oh, what shall I do do? Didn't know that's where this podcast would go, but <laughs> yeah, that's not surprising. <laughs> It goes south quick. Chloe's already, Chloe's already flipping through her phone. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta steal it so she pays attention. <laughs> Did the poo story not get her? She was, she wasn't interested. No. Oh my god. Chloe, do you have a poo story of your own to share? <laughs> do you know any, know any poo hoppers? 
Boo Heifer. <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, like, Apparently, for some weird reason, my husband thinks that uh, I have stories about poop. I'm, I'm glad you don't, to be honest. <laughs> Please tell us one, mm. but in Shakespearean English. Yeah. <clears throat> so what else is going on? <laughs> you mean besides the poo guy? I just uh, picture the guy... Oh. Going into like Go breaking into women's like restrooms, like before they flush mm-hmm. or something, <laughs> stealing oh, poop Jesus. and getting arrested as a poo huffer now. Here's the thing: does how do you know it's a poo from a girl or a woman? The guy, the the guy lived with the girl. Like, no, no, no. I'm saying so. He has a huffing poo fetish. Yeah. So do you think, like, in his mind, it's still better to go in the women's room and get poo from there because he knows? Yeah. But I don't think there's any real difference, right? I don't or know. Or do you think you could tell the difference? I, You know what? I haven't had I male poo either. in one hand and female poo in the other and see if I can you know tell what? the difference. Next time I'm done, I'm going to call Chloe in and ask no. her. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, well, down. I want you to see if you can tell the difference. You got to do a double blind test, dude. <laughs> uh, Jesus. To get off this, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, oh, I watched. Do you know who Veritasium is? No. Ver- Veritasium. The, he sounds like an element. A nerdy, like, I, like YouTuber. Element 156. So veritas for like truth, right? Uh-huh. And it's the element of truth. I think is the ah, idea. Okay, veritasium. Got it. Anyways, he does just like science YouTube's. Mm-hmm. So the interesting thing was he was talking about the experiment where, so they would put people in a room, mm-hmm. right? And you had nothing. Like you couldn't take a phone. You couldn't do anything. Yeah. But they had one buzz, one little button, and they say. Like, hitting this will shock you. Like, and it's not like a very light shock. I know, hurt, I know this But it's experiment. not going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. What's that? I, I know what experiment you're talking about. It was such a, like, yeah. a boredom experiment where the only thing you can do yeah. is shock yourself. Yeah. And then, so let me ask first. Chloe, would you shock yourself? If you were in there for 20 minutes, would you shock yourself? No. Okay. So, basically, like, only 25% of women did... But 75% of men did. Something like that. And then I thought, like... So, here's the weird thing. Thinking about myself. One, I think I'm very good at, like, filling Uh my mind during boredom. Like, I can daydream all day. But I'd still hit the button. I'd probably do it first thing. Uh, If there was a button in front of me, immediately that's getting pressed. Yeah. Like, I thought that is such a, like... The, an immediate like difference between men and women is like, I know I'd do it. I d- just out of curiosity, <laughs> like you told me it's not gonna kill me. What's Does that shock like? me? Oh, I'll, and, I'll, I'll see other people do it. And yeah, watch. and even though it's like I could fill my mind with stuff that would make me not bored, it's more like even if I was sitting there trying to daydream, I'd be thinking, I wonder what that button is. So I better hit it first mm-hmm. thing to get it out of my mind, because otherwise I'll just be <laughs> thinking about that button. But do you think you'd hit it more than once? I don't think so. I think I'd just hit it and be like, okay, now I know. I know exactly what it's like. I, I would probably hit it multiple times, dude. I'd If I got bored enough, I'd probably whip out my dick and slap the thing. See, see, no. see what it felt like. Jesus. <laughs> Press it with my how, thumb. This is how people get those fetishes. That guy was like... I'll huff poo once just to see what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> just to see what it's about. It's like, eh, it's not bad. <laughs> I just want to see if there's a difference like between my poo and this one. poo. All right. So. But yeah, I've heard else? of that experiment. I mean, we of course went over that in psychology at some point. Oh, there okay. was a. Yeah, I thought so that was an interesting one. I was just thinking about it. I think it was uh, maybe Vsauce or something I've seen this in, where they had like the How do you know Vsauce, but not Veritasium? I feel like they're the exact I same, don't... like, brand. I might have watched Veritasium and just not know the name. Yeah. It's very he's the He's the one with hair. <laughs> and sometimes a beard. He's short. 
I just I don't know him by name, man. All right. I'll have to look him up. But anyways, the Vsauce one, I think it was on here. Maybe it was just a Reddit post. But it was the world's quietest room. And it's so mm-hmm. quiet, like, you can only hear your, like, you can hear, like, your insides working. <clears throat> and he said the longest anybody's Ugh. lasted just being in there was, like, 20 minutes. I bet I could I do like, it. I don't really? know. Really? Like, be that bad? A lot of times like, I hear that, and I'm like, then I again, do like, that. 20 minutes with nothing to do but hear your insides, like, you're, you're just not used to that level of quiet. Like, that doesn't you exist can't anymore. Yourself, right? Yeah, like, you should be able to hack it just by going... Poof. Like the whole time, exactly. Like, you know, just but twenty minutes is a noise. long time when you don't know, like, cause you it's not a clock, you know. I don't know. This feels like it would be like it just reminds me of the Rick and Morty episode where he's like true level, and then <laughs> Morty gets obsessed <laughs> with it. But it's the opposite. It's like no yeah. one can stand it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's probably that's the thing you've never experienced complete silence, right? So well, you've never experienced true levels, Zach. You don't know shit. Annoying to not hear mm. anything. That's true. I don't. Those, um, I've never have experienced it. Gravity right. pods. They call it like totally immersive. That you can do it. Zero gravity pods. Yeah. Like you're immersed well, yourself been... in the water. In yeah, I've been in one of those. Places. Have you been in one of those? Those uh. Yeah. Um, the Joe Rogan things? Yeah, shit. What are they called? Gravity. He's spas, obsessed too, with them. Is what it was called. We we've been we looked at them one time. I I was interested in trying. What did you think? It's definitely relaxing. I liked it a lot. I could definitely see where it's something you'd want to do more than once. Though I only did it once, but like. But did you have like? Did you have like a like a hallucinations or anything like that? No, that's what I'm saying. You want to do it more than once because the first time you're, it's more like you're getting used to it, and then like the last twenty minutes, it's kind of you start to see stuff. But by the time you get used Did to you? it, at, no, like a little bit. Like it's not like deep like, hallucinations what you see? or anything. It's just kind of like colors and hmm. like uh, it suddenly looks like you're in outer space because everything's so pitch black and you're floating. It actually feels like you're floating in space. Like, it really does feel like that, and it is very relaxing. I do recommend it, but I would also recommend going, like, three or four times, like, you know, within a week or two. I wanted to try it. I just, you know, haven't yet. I could totally see how it would be something, like, if you had it in your house, I would be, like, a really nice kind of relaxation thing. thing. Yeah, I'm assuming it's just kind of like forcing you to meditate, basically. Hmm. Can't do anything else. The biggest thing is you can, Hmm. like, kind of hear your heart beating, so you have to get used to that and calm your breath down and kind of ignore it. Yeah. What are those called, though? Those called a gravity... Gravity Uh, spa's like the brand that I went to. A float tank. Yeah, float that's tank. not that's exactly what they call it. Flo- yeah, that's it. Huh? Float what? Tank. They're called flotation tanks. No, you're right. I think it's like a float, float tank, tank or right? something like that. Yeah. Okay. You're saying no about the gravity spa. That's just the name of the brand that I went to. Mm. Yeah, they're very, very interesting. It is really weird to be floating, too. Hmm. Like, you're only floating nine inches or so, but... You definitely feel floaty, and you don't feel the water. You don't feel the water? No, because they they heat it to exactly the temperature of your body. That's the whole Mm. point. Mm, That's interesting. That's what makes you feel like you're floating, because you don't feel the water. How much did it cost for your one session, if you don't mind me asking? It was like... $60, $60 Sixty dollars, sixty to ninety dollars. That's not too bad. But it's like not a, something I could do. Like it's sixty dollars for like a first time thing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to do, mm. but it's like I can't do this for like three or four times. But you're in California, so like it'll be a hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say I bet it'll be way more. Yeah. I think when we were looking, it was over a hundred, and then we Jeez. just didn't go. I don't know why. I don't remember. Yeah, the the one in Columbus, the Gravity Spa place, they also have um, 
oxygen bar afterwards. Oxygen it, bar. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It's like, uh, you know those oxygen tanks people have when they, like, put in their nose and stuff? Mm-hmm. It's like that. Uh-huh. Like, afterwards, it's like a fancy-looking thing where you just put... You did that? You can pump oxygen into... Yeah. I mean, it was there. I was like, I'll try it, I guess. How did that feel? I didn't really feel like anything. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I felt anything from that one. Wait, Zach. And then afterwards, did you go to a third thing? And they're like, here's a button. It'll shock you. And you're like, <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> and I licked it. <laughs> Here's your eight dollars for that. I thought the actual oxygen would give you any effect. I don't think so, but I don't know. No, yeah. I don't. I don't think. So. I don't think that did anything. I think it was just. A I'm cool a thing. huffing glue fan, and I'll stick by it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I put it up my butt, it would feel good. You know, oxygen mm-hmm. straight through okay. the butt. Mm. So what else is going on? <laughs> <laughs> what else is going on in the world? Okay, so Chloe, bored. you're always so bored. What's your topic? Nothing going on in this world. Mm-hmm. See, we get to huff and poop and flotation tanks, and she's like, nothing. Uh... <laughs> she ain't got it's shit. It's a boring place, isn't it? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Think about bodily functions and weird things to do with them. Um... I see the stimulus package, I think, got uh, approved. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh... Again? Well, it needs to go through lots of approvals. So yeah, I think they're like, getting... This is the third one, right? Yeah, the yeah. third stimulus package. The $1,400. Hmm. You buying more GME with it? Yeah. <laughs> Wall Street Bets <laughs> had... This is how I found out, is Wall, Wall Street, Street Bets, Bets had a thing saying this happened and the top comment mm. was well we all know where that money's going to <laughs> the like, productive oh, use crazy. of gme stocks <laughs> it might actually do that a lot of people might actually buy in during that time did you see uh michael berry's tweets he went on a fucking rant about the u.s dollar and inflation rates I've the weird thing about that guy is he deletes his tweets not long after, so I see some of them, not all of them. I'm sure he did his go into inflation. Really, he does delete them. Say, yeah, he deletes all of them after. Go do it now. I bet he deleted whatever you read. That's so weird. Constantly deletes his own tweets. I don't understand why he does that. You know who he? He's uh, Cassandra is his actual name, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw he, like, changed his name after something happened. There's a lot of, like, fakers that claim to be Michael Berry. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a story behind the Cassandra, though. I don't remember what. No, he still has, well, six hours ago, one day ago, two days ago. Oh, wow, he does delete a lot. He only has nine tweets now. I saw, like, nine in one day. Maybe... Maybe it is. It's really weird. Yeah, Twitter's not loading for me. I don't know. Fuck it. Anyways. I just looked. He he did. He did delete them. Yeah. Told you. He only had nine weird. total He's tweets. A weird guy. <laughs> Probably I don't poop. understand. Somebody. Oh, my God. Well, somebody made a website that just saved all of Trump's tweets. So if he deleted oh, yeah. them, it would be archived there right why somebody needs to do this for his twitter Mm. feed if they haven't already probably well he's not quite as important but yeah what one of his tweets talked about how they no it's just interesting to go back because one of his tweets actually talked about how he was right last time and now there's proof of it but not if you fucking delete Mm -hmm. everything there's not going to (laughs) be proof of it someone has to say that (laughs) Yeah, I know. But he always has interesting stuff. Yeah. I feel like he might be the original office. Like a lot the about office. there's going to be inflation. It's time to short Tesla. But he posts graphs showing like, you know. Uh, I got to remember one of the last yeah, he graphs was. he posted that was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Oh, there was one like the S&P 500 along with the... Uh, 
the, the interest rate, as you could see, and then he pointed out the peaks and like as it went to a bubble and mm-hmm. then and then where it went down. I'm like, okay, that's well, basically he's saying the, bubble, the dollar's going to crash. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's good. Start the random walk, Zach. You gotta. I will, I will. Oh, I did find... I went down and found that, the electric... I want to... I think I was trying to quote the last time. Uh, the electric. The random... Walk. The robot stream electric Shoelace Company. God damn it, never mind. <laughs> Take a nice little... Here it is. Uh-huh, okay. Now I just gotta wait for the fucking thing to load. You see, your internet so sucks this was too. In the Everybody's 60s. internet sucks. Yeah. Take a nice little What's company that's been making shoelaces man? for 40 years and sells at a respectable six times earnings ratio. Changes the names Shoelaces Inc. to Electronics and Silicon Firth Burners. In today's market, the words electronics and silicons are worth 15 times earnings. However, the real play comes from the word Firth Burners, which no one understands. A word that no one understands entitles <laughs> you to double your entitled score. Therefore, we have six times earnings what for the shoelace business word? and 15 times earnings for the electronic and silicon, or a total of 21 times earnings. Multiply this by two for Firth Burners, and we now have a score of 42 times earnings for the new companies. The Despite fuck? that it just still makes shoelaces. This That's is the hilarious. environment of the sixties when the electronics bubble was going on. What was what was the Firth Firthborns? Firthborns? Firth burners. That's what he said. Is it's a word that they put in just because it doesn't make sense, is the joke. Oh. <laughs> it's like, ah, it's a new tech thing. No one understands it. Must be amazing. Oh, and that's what got people to buy it. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, the stock market's kind of fucking weird man i think gme mm. kind of really exposed how fucking weird it can be it's not ex- expensive because it's they're... been like that forever it's just now this is the most popular iteration yeah yeah because people it's... didn't they sort of got used to text being bonkers mm. it's also because if you look at the p go ahead what did you say I said, if you look at the PE and for the tech stock, you realize it's ain't crazy. nothing making sense. It's fucking yeah. crazy. It's all crazy. It doesn't well, matter. It's also because there's retail investors paying attention to that. Not a lot of retail investors existed as many do now when you can just download an app and be like, I want to buy this stock. All right, the Nick pours the alcohol, made it sound like a penis. <laughs> I don't know. Chloe's <laughs> just giving it a stare. That's why I was like, okay. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> see how long until she goes stop drinking nick <laughs> is that your is that your test yeah see like it just made it sound like a uti mm. <laughs> <laughs> um so february has been kind of quiet though like there hasn't been any crazy news stories march like is gonna anything. be fucking crazy yeah there's gonna be Zombie robots <laughs> March is from about to outer fuck us space. Up. Or I'm speaking okay, too early because there's still one more day. That's, <laughs> it doesn't make sense now, Chloe. February <laughs> still has well. one day, though. We could be fucked tomorrow. Oh. Mm. I might have just jinxed them. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's February. It's your birthday, right? What'd you do? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the 23rd was. Uh, we went. Uh, Nicole took me to get donuts. Uh, okay. We went to Dave and Buster's. Well, everything you do is Dave and Buster's. We went, yeah, because it's fun. Was that fun, your favorite man. place? It's up there. I like your arcades. funerals are going to be held at Dave and Buster's, aren't they? <laughs> I want coin pushers and, and... <laughs> got tickets. Yeah, <laughs> Tick, ticket games at my funeral. I'm down. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm actually Those so my... are redeemable in heaven. That will be in his eulogy. <laughs> so the games I, the board games I've, uh, I should say card games. I'm working on that. I actually want to publish myself. Are actually taking Dave and Buster games, like arcade ticket games, and making them card uh-huh. games. That's actually a neat concept. Yeah. at least. and making like, it like an a arcade, line. The, the card game. Yeah, and making them a line of games too, so they actually have like a, a single theme. 
Mm. But anyways, we went there, and where else did we go? Shit, we went somewhere else. <laughs> it was, like, all food-related, too, though. That was the funny part. Mm. That's, like, it's all these food things. Right. Like, that's, I feel I mean, like what that's else the only can way we do? celebrate anymore is, like, eat cake. That's a lot of fucking cake, man. <laughs> I never liked birthday cake. Chloe, like, sheet cake doesn't yeah, taste Chloe that Yeah, Chloe got a green card. Let's get cake. <laughs> yep. Whatever good things happen, let's get a cake. Good things happen to us. We get fatter. That's how it goes. That's the, <laughs> that's America for you. <laughs> like we can't go do like escape room. We can't uh, go to movie theater. You know, all true. those can't go to spa. Like all those experiences yeah. is out of the table. Then you're just like, well, let's find a cake. We mm. went to the Columbus Museum of Art um, just a few. Like maybe a week ago. Oh yeah, we went. Th- we've been there before. It's nice. It's, it's not, not the bad. best, yeah, but you know, it's kind of okay. You know, There's. You know what was better is the Columbus. Cleveland. Well, I was saying in Columbus, the uh, conservatory. Yeah. Is good. Franklin's conservatory. Yeah, go to there if you haven't gone. Yeah, that's a good Franklin idea. Franklin Conservatory. I think that's actually fairly nice relative to like other cities. The Columbus Art Museum is pretty like mediocre relative to other cities. Mm. Yeah, it's. Just- that's exactly what I put. It was kind of mediocre. Nicole was disappointed because she had been there before. And so it's basically yeah. like one or two new artists that are just having showings and the rest was basically all the same. Yeah. But it's something... It's some, somewhat, it's just like seeing nice architecture and a nice building and walking through and just going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'll, like Cleveland actually has a much better art museum if you go there. It's actually, since they have old school money, I feel like the cities with old school money... Yeah. Have the best art museum. San Francisco's is shit. Yeah, we, new money. we had yeah. a we went Moment through shit. some cool museums when we were in uh, California. Besides the modern art part, oh, uh, in uh, LA. Getty. We went to the one in LA, Zach and I. With, we yeah. tried to go there later LA with Condi Chloe. Museum? Yeah, and they were closed. Um, but yeah, they had Picasso and stuff and, and Getty. Yeah, see, they have hey, San Francisco. They just it's, have money. It's just, it's <laughs> they just got money. They just got the money to buy yeah. any art. But they also had, man, it annoys me to no end some of the modern art pieces. It's just like this giant, like, sheet of canvas with, like, all red and, like, a blue in it. Like, a blue line. Yeah, I think I saw those horse shit. The worst one in the San Francisco one that I saw Mm -hmm. was it was just people, it was like a video, and it was just people in, like, masks digging with their hand and going around like saying gibberish that was it that's the whole thing wait what say this again it, it was just a repeated video uh-huh. of people like in the desert and like masks and like a robe or something digging with their hands in the desert like that's it that was, was the just art on repeat piece? and they were saying gibberish that's what it fuck that that was the piece that it was it was it's art and I yeah that's fucking dumb I was like, did I paid to see this? You know what? Harry had a great art piece that I think should have been in a museum. He wanted it to be even bigger, but he but got he flushed like, it. He got the biggest. So you no, know, he got the biggest piece of white canvas that his his uh, teacher would let him get. Uh huh. And he wanted it to be like huge, like as like uh, you know, like those giant modern art paintings that are just like one color or something, like. The yeah. size of a wall. And in tiny, 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 tiny print, in the middle of the canvas, he just had waste knot. And that's it. That's the <laughs> whole piece. And I was like, that's amazing. Especially the bigger you went with it, the better that would be. Mm. I think, yeah, he should have rented, like, an entire building, stripped <laughs> it all out. <laughs> painted and the then just put place. that there. Like a whole point. fucking tapestry. Yeah, like you have to climb stairs all the way to the top of the skyscraper to see the word waste not on the <laughs> it side. Li- it of literally one drapes wall. over the Empire State Building. <laughs> and you have to have like a microscope to see it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it actually has to be painted though. It had to be painted white. You can't just have Jesus. the canvas. You have to paint the whole fucking thing white. Mm. And that's why now you see why his teacher would only let him have it be so big. 
Also, I think it's Harry's clever way of being as lazy as possible yet artistic. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm going to do a performance art where I don't leave the couch for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if you actually just set up a fucking couch, just set up a live stream in a museum of you just sitting on the couch. This is art. This is art. I'll say as I'm shitting my pants without leaving. Just call it something pretentious. Like the decline of mental health during COVID. <laughs> but a longer than that. Because the longer the title, the more pretentious. The essence of being while a plague rages on. <laughs> yeah, see? There you go. You're getting it. <laughs> the, es <laughs> the essence of being. That's so perfect. Yeah. That, that, that's really being a pretentious asshole. <laughs> you know what, though? We're going to see a lot of um, art come out about like COVID and stuff. I mean, I guess we kind of already had. Like... I think, I don't know, like, stand-up comics, like, I think they particularly avoid it just because it's like everyone would talk about it. Yeah, it's kind of like Trump when he was around. It was like... Yeah, it's like, <sighs> it's, it's not creative to do it when everyone else is yeah, doing it. It's like... Um, you know what I thought of, though? Do you think they'll, in the future, there will be movies that set, take place in 2020 and, like, everyone will wear masks, right? Like, they'll... Probably. They'll probably have to have that, right? Like, that'll be they a have, thing. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah. And there's, I, I feel like 2001, like, like 9-11, maybe the other big thing that happened in the last 30 years, but other than that, it's, like, nothing. Like, there's no, like, Vietnam, yeah. where it's, like, there's a big fucking thing in the background. Yeah. Like, you have to put CCR song uh forcing his son <laughs> yeah. in the 60s show because that's going on right yeah yeah what will be the the song that they play for covid i don't know oh i know it'll, there is a it'll be song, is there? it'll be it'll be the tiger king song the one he made. Oh. <laughs> oh there will Yoko definitely be, yeah like 20 years from now uh -huh. There's gotta be like a movie or TV show that opens with "Hey, all you cool cats and kittens" is like somebody sitting there browsing through the channels in 2020, like looking back. Absolutely, there definitely will be. You know, one of the modern, the I guess it's modern art. I don't know. One of the pieces at the uh, art museum was literally a fucking collage of just pictures, and apparently, it's traveled to multiple museums. And I was like, this is just yeah. a fucking collage of pictures. I did this shit when I was, like, 13. Yeah. There was no rhyme or reason. It was just cool pictures. But you didn't blow the guy that, you know, is in all the art circles that, that could get your stuff into a museum. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know, uh, oh, shit, what was uh, Danny DeVito's art critic? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. had some about. ridiculous name. The Andy Warhol thing. Yeah. I love it. That is the dehumidifier. <laughs> well, it's lovely, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. So, what's a piece of art that we could try and. That's it. That's something we should figure out. What can the discourse. What piece of art can we yeah. make and try and actually get into art? It's museum? gotta be. A corpse getting <laughs> fucked somehow. That's, yeah, that's the discourse thing. Something tells me that wouldn't make it in. <laughs> also, How do you do art? can any of us draw like that? We gotta go more modern art. Oh, and I'm not saying drawing. That's not a modern art. Modern art, you don't draw or paint anything. Oh, I mean, you that's can. That's not creative. <laughs> it's just gotta be shit. They're, they're mixed the medium these days. It's not just traditional canvas art. Okay, mixed medium. Ooh. Makes me think we have like a projection of a video of a dead corpse, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Onto a pile of poop. No, no, no. <laughs> I guess you can do that too. <laughs> Why not? Maybe we'll add that. I'm just saying a picture, uh, like a video of a dead corpse, right? And it's, you know, rocking back and forth like it's getting fucked. And, but we have a puppet, right? 
a real live puppet that's animatronically like wired to actually look like it's fucking the video of the dead corpse. I'm in. And there's poop underneath for some reason. <laughs> just just to satisfy Chloe's <laughs> weird fetish. And there's a <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody that looks so like he's bad. sniffing yeah, it too. Not bad, you, know, like, <laughs> you hear it? You, I already got. I already so, got a fan. How I think about it, like you, you could have two skeletons fucking, right? Uh -huh. And you have a projection of actually a naked man or naked woman fucking doing mm -hmm. it, but it's a projection. Yeah. And you can only see it from a certain angle. Mm. Right. And then you can phrase it as like the past and the current and exactly, <laughs> you know, the life in the end they all become skeletons <laughs> there you go we got it mm. perfect mm -hmm. let's call us uh, the san francisco museum of modern art now mm -hmm. we're on to something here i, I mean it's better than half the art i've seen stuff. for modern art yeah we watch one of those free uh bands performance in san francisco oh right? yeah and uh, they stand out those brochures to describe what they're dancing and uh, the way i look at it is like man there's lots of words in there each one of them makes sense i don't understand how they put together so it makes sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's written by the same guy that writes uh -huh. wine reviews No, the guy with oh, God. Did some cocaine. Have you ever actually, <laughs> like... Like, pretty much all wine things either just use, like, smooth, crisp, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's always the same wording, just phrased in slightly different orders. Yeah. I almost want to start a winery to just come up with the dumbest shit. <laughs> like, how can I describe this wine? Shit. No, I was like... <laughs> Hints of drywall from the 1940s. Hints of drywall. Maybe he installed a little it incorrectly. It, it contains a traceable amount of vestals. Yeah. In well, they have, like, tastes of oak barrels. Like, why not put other non-edible things? Yeah. A footstool well, because like a 70-year-old man, but only a faint hint. <laughs> A 90-year-old like bathed their feet in this dreams. wine. <laughs> Tastes like clinical depression. Mm -hmm. you're so oh, dude, body. we should. That's that's what we should do. We should make a discourse wine and be like uh, um, really off the wall with it. Like uh, when Penn and Teller had their water and they had like a spider in it. Just something oh. really <laughs> fucking crazy. Tastes like death. Mmm. So you have your dis your discourse well, wine. Still alcohols with dead bugs in there, right? And it's a still a thing. Mm. Oh, okay. So There's we'll get wine. cadavers and we'll put f cadaver fingers in every bottle of wine. I, no, I was gonna say it's been aged in a corpse. Ah, there we go. Aged barrel. with a corpse. Yeah. What aged in a corpse? A corpse aged in there? No, aged inside a corpse orifice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> we, this we have actually sounds like it would be expensive with, to make. Uh, you know, some funeral homes. Real tastes like history. <laughs> it actually sounds like that would be kind of expensive to to make that wine. Like that actually sounds luxury. Yeah, and, and then pricing. What's really expensive is you know, like in the wine world, it's like the older it is, the more expensive, right? Yeah. So this wine the order was the shoved up the asshole <laughs> of a Civil War veteran. A Civil War veteran <laughs> and aged 120 <laughs> years of that ass. Before <laughs> we took it out. We literally <laughs> we dug up Shakespeare. Million dollars. <laughs> shoved this wine up his ass. <laughs> and now we're selling it to you. Hmm. Starting this company. Man, the discourse is we have too many good ideas, not enough. We need more capital. <laughs> <laughs> we need to f get me Mark Cuban on the line. I think he'll like this idea. <laughs> we, we, we go on Shark Tank and pitch that to the sharks. 
<laughs> right up the corpse's ass. <laughs> That's what I wanted you in front of him. <laughs> we make we make sure to grab the and cheeks and swish it around a little bit. <laughs> mm. And then the thing the thing that really sells it is and for you investors, I have some here for you today. <laughs> and then you sniff the thing. And go, you sniff the little cork and you go. <laughs> you <give that>. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, it's been there a while. And you pour it. Pour it. It's really, no it's thanks. A, it's really <laughs> aged. Not fun. I will not fund it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <sighs> oh my god, that'd be so fucking funny. <laughs> Is no oh. longer oh, yeah. recollection of a wine. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard red wine. You've heard white wine. Have you After heard a long time wine? in of our corpse, I thought it would be brown wine up the right orifice. <laughs> brown wine. <laughs> oh, we've created a own category of wine. Mm, Have you ever actually watched Shark it. Tank? I've seen clips. That's it. Uh, okay. Just YouTube clips? Yeah, I don't know where. Just little bits. That's a great show. Is it? I've seen, like, most of them I feel like I'd be like, like, you can't make that much money off of it. I mean, a lot of people go in there with that, but there's there's quite a few people who come in who've already made a lot of money and they actually need capital. Like, it's an actual, we need mm. to raise money. Some people mm. are cheeky and figure out, like, they get on the show basically to advertise their product and they don't take any deals. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. People have mm. definitely figured that out. You know what the number one selling thing from Shark Tank is? No. What? Scrub Daddy. It's oh, a, sorry, it's, a it's a, it's a sponge that's in, like, the shape of, like, a, basically, like, a picture, like, a uh, happy face emoticon but like the eyes are holes and the, the oh, yeah, mouth yeah, is a hole is. yeah it actually i have Snow one it actually Daddy? does yeah, clean really that well from Shark Tank. Yeah. and when it's like hmm. cold water will make it like stiff uh -huh. and abrasive and warm water makes it more like spongy i was like i can actually see why this <clears throat> was the biggest selling product because it actually works yeah but see it's all like they all feel gimmicky. Isn't that what a lot right? of products are? Yeah, like no one's going to go and pitch Tesla to them. <laughs> no, because they already got We investors. have a space heater. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why it's all like the shows always seem like man, you're not going to make that much money off most of it. No. Yeah, sometimes, you, sometimes people come in with pretty like genius inventions. This one guy came up with like a... He was a fireman for like 20, 30 years, and he came up with like a thing you can attach to a, a hose to attach it to a um, fire hydrant within seconds. And he showed like with his mm -hmm. with his device, you can attach it to a, a fire hydrant in like literally like five seconds. And then he compared it to like what they have to do now to get a fire hydrant. And it took like, you know, a minute or two, which obviously is a huge difference when it's we're yeah. talking about a fire. And so, but, like, so he just needed capital because he was, like, an inventor. Mm. So this is all great, but this is not how you make real fortunes. No. Right? I, like, I do you know who Peter Thiel is, right? No. Not by that name, no. Uh, he was an early investor in, like, uh, PayPal. He was... So, PayPal and Elon... PayPal came from Elon Musk and Peter Thiel. Okay. Okay, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Now. And then he invested in Facebook really early. So, he was in that yeah, yeah, social yeah. network movie. He was the guy that he went to visit in the bathrobe, I think. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Anyways. Potential capitalist. He wrote a book called Zero to One. Uh-huh. Okay. And basically, the whole idea is you really can't make money off of running a really smart, well-run business, you basically have to get a really good monopoly going. That's yeah, that basically makes, I mean, the that makes concept. sense. So what I would want to see in, like, Shark Tank is, like, okay, we're basically going to buy up all the rights to all the water for this locality. <laughs> and we're not going to... We're going to either you pay us or you're going to fucking die of thirst. 
Like ne- that's Nestle's. What if Nestle like actually planned this in a third world country, right? Jesus. Like, like they actually were caught like trying to buy up all the water rights and short it. Like you know, control what the market the so that they can mark up water a shitload. And that's how you make real money, Zach. Is like you corner I, a market. Yeah, I understand that. So that's a fucking necessity. So we're talking about Detroit, right? So we're gonna. Yeah. I hope short Detroit. Exactly, yeah. Like, uh, you know, real water in Detroit. I have the market for that. I can actually get it to them <laughs> for a fucking price. Otherwise, they will die. <laughs> Damn. I will invest in that because you are making money. So so if we were to plan a monopoly, the the water one's already done. Yeah. Nestle beat us to it. What, what would be a good thing yeah, to monopolize? So- so, like, the thing is, most of them have turned out to be, like, Google. It's kind of a monopoly, right? Like, it's yeah. just a natural one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's hard to force a monopoly. A good, what's a good monopoly we could capture? Hmm. Man, yeah, they already got them all. Yeah, niche market before the government trying to find you for monopoly. Yeah. The government definitely doesn't try and stop monopolies because there's a lot going on right now. You don't really. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you're trying to buy all the water, obviously, the government will let <laughs> They're you. like, okay, like, <laughs> yeah. we'll fight that monopoly. <laughs> kind of. That's way too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be something like that. Mm. Okay, I got a good one. Uh-huh. You have to have a lot of capital, obviously. So this is... Okay. Assuming you have the money, you can do this. You buy up as much Arabica places that like make the beans for that kind of coffee, because that's like the number one bean used mm. in coffee. But as long as they just they have other places to grow it, people will just spring up farms elsewhere. Yeah, but they gotta plant. And I don't know how long it takes to plant coffee beans. It's gonna be pretty hard if you buy them all up real quick, right? Yeah. Like, there's probably, probably. not that many major farms eventually. for it. You know, so, the, see, the thing is, what mo- they mostly turn out to be, what I think most of them are, are, like, rights to create medical things. Like, that's why, like, yeah. oh, we have an HIV medicine that will actually save your life. Three grand costs eight cents to manufacture, but I own the rights to it. Yeah, I guess that's why inventing in patents is the best, but... It seems, yeah. Yeah, patenting the something way to go. medically that like will save your life is like you're gonna make bank. Mm-hmm. So what we'll patent so the what we pill do, that Zach, cures your necrophilia. We... <laughs> no, no, no. Here was my idea. So here's if I were like an evil mastermind. Uh huh. Okay. Create a plague. Yeah, that's where I was going. Is we start the next plague, but before we have, we have the cure right or the vaccine already in the bank ready to go because those those stocks that have the vaccine they skyrocketed well once. yeah of course and then they're not even monopolies they have competitors if you had the monopoly yeah you'd that's go fucking insane. crazy your stock man dude that's so insane it's kind of sad mm. though like so how big the medical field the is so. yeah there we go I s- just come up with any kind of medical invention, any kind of device, and see if you can sell it at mm. all. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. Anus widener, so you can get things out of people's asses. Because apparently that's a big problem in ERs. Like, Shouldn't it be an anus, like, pinkener? Pinkener? <laughs> Your asshole ain't perfectly white. <laughs> <laughs> I said wide dinner. Wide dinner. make it wider, oh, like not cleaning. white. I thought you said white. No, wide dinner. Because people stick stuff up their butts, Wait, you need to open it up the orifice. Oh, Jesus. Okay, never mind. I thought you were going a different way. Never mind. <laughs> you thought I was talking about making the butt look nice. Simeon. Simeon. Simeon's. Maybe you do say it, Simeon's. I always say Simeon's. Oh, like what? Micro CT, CT, Medical MRI. imaging is a monopoly by Simeon, Siemens, whatever. How do you say that company's name? Like MRIs? They have a monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. Really? They That's a monopoly? The machine 
almost monopoly. You go to any hospital. So I said most know. fortunes are made from monopolies. Damn. The, their software for reading those data and uh, their machines they built. Yeah, but like, what's a fortune? Like, to me, if I had just a couple million dollars, I'd be fine for like the rest of my life, right? Like, your fortunes, yeah. you're talking I'm, like. I'm talking like Microsoft. Yeah. Like, if you want to play a video game on your computer, you basically have to have Windows. Yeah. Pretty much. That's why I had somebody, um, when I was like uh, learning about programming or something, somebody was going on a fucking rant about all these people that download fucking Linux and then just emulate Windows to play a game. And like, you're not doing Linux right. Just fucking download Windows to play your game. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, and have a separate section for Linux. Yeah. To do your work. That's fine. Yeah. Windows is a monopoly because every time I start Linux, it's like, oh, but you need Windows to use this thing. But but, but think yeah. about it. Windows is so easily to be targeted by the government. But Simians, who at the time... No one even knows. Nobody no really yeah. knows yeah. until you are the you know, professionals. And you look at it and like, oh, that's actually a monopoly. That's very true. Like, I've never even heard of the company. I never even thought about MRIs and how a company has to make those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's in the background. Yeah. So that's really is you corner the market on something no one even thinks about. Yeah. yeah. It's like that the um, diabetic drug, um, right? Insulin, yeah. Yeah, that's Most people fun. think about that because they have insulin. Yeah, that, that yeah, one's in the uh, forefront of people who have diabetes because like, they do end up paying like $800 for like a $30 insulin shot. But you have something that's derivative, like produce mm. one source of material for this drug. Yeah, jack up one thing source. that goes into insulin, whatever the element is that comes from the earth, if you buy up all that, just you buy start it up. There it you back. go. Damn. Like the rare metal mm-hmm. that you hold up, and people don't think about it. You jack up the rare metal price, and all like electronics prices go up. What I'm saying, Zach, is, what's that movie? Uh, came out like ten years ago with the. The post-apocalyptic shit. Mad Max. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad Max. You control the society if you control all the water. It's true. Like that dude did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very, very, very realistic in that way. Mm. Isn't it, uh, I think we talked about this, Michael Berry has, like, shorts and water or something. Oh, yeah, water management, yeah, some, like, he has a very specific, like, the water rights have to be this and this and this, then there's money to be made. Really? Is it, like, yeah. a, a, an American stocks or something? Like, no, like, he, so, I don't know what he's shorting, ETF because he like came water. up with the shorts last time to even exist. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I think he's buying particular actual land rather than, like, a stock. He's buying land where he thinks uh, water will be, or water yeah. management companies. Where you can have the needed. water rights, particularly. Hmm. Dude, it's so fucking weird. Is mm. like how much money has he already made, money. and that's just what he still does. He just like work. Yeah, what obscure weird. thing like, can I make? I feel money like on? if I have like ten million, I'm like I don't even care anymore. Exactly. Like but maybe that's. Well, I don't understand how you yeah. still care to make so much money off of weird shit like water when you got, properties. When you got autism for the, to the nth degree, like I think that yeah. guy does, mm-hmm. that's that's just what you do. That's yeah, I think I think he honestly just enjoys, like, I don't even think he cares about money so much as just being yeah. right. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Like, I figured out how... Like, it's, if you had $10 million, about, like, what would you do? People that edit Wikipedia. What's that? Yeah. Like, the people... It's the same thing about people that edit Wikipedia. All the fairly autistic guys... Yeah. Like, spend, like, their lifetimes writing shit on... And they don't get paid. They don't get yeah. anything for it. It's like 1% of spend, users, if that. like, their whole lifetime... Yep. Like, devoted to putting information. And, like, they don't get shit for it. They it's just what they want to do. I don't the know. Scholars, the masters in Citadel, mm. in Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it is really <laughs> weird. 
Man, Wikipedia is so useful too. Yeah, but they don't get shit for it. No. At least Michael Berry gets fucking paid. Yeah. Well, so let's say you made uh, I don't know, twenty million dollars on a nice bet. Like, what what do you do in your free time? What do you do? Because like, eventually you get bored. Like, you're gonna have to do something. Yeah, no, like I would do more creative pursuits. Like, I feel like that's how most yeah. movies get made. Like the good ones. The ones that yeah. don't have a market is like they a rich person is like I want to see the movie so I'll give you the money to make the movie, and like I have input to like how I want it to be made because yeah. I want to see this this way. Yeah, I'd probably be more investing like, in art and do. doing art. That'd definitely be up up my alley yeah. for what I'd want to do. Like I, I want would totally have movies to be made. Th- I would have that puppet banging a video of a dead corpse. <laughs> they would be hanging in the San Francisco Museum of Art right now if I had twenty million dollars. Uh-huh. I feel like I would do a lot of shit. I forget his name. Um, Chin or Chan, something Chin or Chan. Uh, he he was the the artist dude that did something for Facebook and just took a some stock in Facebook instead of being paid, right? Oh yeah. yeah. And so he's like a multi million dollar artist, and he had a podcast and stuff. Mm-hmm. He did. I told. You, I think I told you about this. He did a whole entire podcast where he was. He had a. Uh, like a sex gag on he just does shit like that sex what... gag yeah like a oh, ball like gag the... I see I, I gotcha yeah he did a whole entire podcast with it on Chloe has no idea what... so a little ball and then you like tie oh, it behind okay, okay. so that you know you, when you're raping they don't make noise I guess so he did a <laughs> podcast with that on is what Zach said he also yeah, um he didn't like yeah, prostitutes. Yeah, that's what I would do is like trolling type shit. Yeah, yeah maybe that's not what he that, does. But stuff let people go, but why? Dude, he's so wild. He In his podcast, he was talking about like he didn't like prostitutes, so he would just try to get women off the street to be prostitutes for him. And he found out about mm-hmm. almost any girl he came up to, almost all of them would, $5,000 was what it took to get them to sleep with him. Five grand. Yep. He said that's pretty yeah, much the breaking point. you told me about point. that. Five grand. Yeah. <laughs> the dude's wild, man. So, like, you just watch like one. Like, I wonder. This is a podcast? What's his name? Uh, see, I couldn't remember his name. I'll find it. I wonder, like. I don't even know old ladies. Exists. I feel like the older you get, the more the price drops. No? Uh, I don't know if he tried older lady. He was trying to actually get laid. <laughs> I think it was trying the youngest. Oh no! I'd could. like try to graph a function. Like here's their age, their hotness on a scale from one to ten. <laughs> That'd be a like, whole. Like I would try to create experiment. like a. Like if they have like other colored hair, like if they dyed their hair pink, does the price go down? The, the price go I down. Oh yeah. But I don't know. You but you I'd would do know. like a whole fucking study. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Hey, I got some money. Maybe I should just start propositioning. <laughs> so what what look is chloe giving you right now what's that so what you look don't is actually chloe... have to pay them you really just want to know when they say yes true that is true but i feel like showing them the money and that it's real i'd have i'd i have i could have five grand in cash also you right them saying yeah i'll sleep with you for five thousand dollars is different from them saying yeah i'll sleep with you and then actually going to sleep with you right so he actually slept with the women yeah no he actually slept with them it wasn't a he just See, asked most people won't make a podcast about them picking up prostitutes i guess they're not really prostitutes they're just women that were temporarily that is shocking that enough women... like how many women said no 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 money no matter what that's what i want to know yeah I feel like uh, the people that would would be like married people and stuff. Yeah. Maybe just didn't proposition them because they're generally older or like what? Like that. I want to know the specifics. Like I said, I want the function. Yeah. And then also like the location where he did it. Yeah, that's if true. It's, if it's just in the place that's yeah. famous for this. Yeah. No that's true. If you go to like conservative. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, North Carolina, where there's a bunch of church ladies, you're getting slapped the first time you mention it. You go to San Diego, 
There will be lots of ladies that will be like, $400. <laughs> Shit, I'll <laughs> blow you for 20 right now. <laughs> they'll, like, your initial offer was $400, and they'll be like, Shit, I only got 20 bucks last time, yeah! <laughs> God damn! <laughs> that's a week's pay. Yeah. That's true. So you, see, that's what I want to know. I want location. The yeah, like, there's there all kinds be of a stuff. Function that gives you like there are so many variables to it, and I want to know. Like, okay, here's everything that goes into it. And then you got to get even like, deeper of like, what can you get them to do upper once they're in bed for more York. money? Upper East Side of New York. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. Five dollars. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I make that in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You're wasting my time. <laughs> But yeah, I think think also you you would want to graph like weird sexual things, see what you could get them to do here's once the, you got them. Here's the other thing: what does that guy look like? Oh, oh dude, yeah. look at him. <laughs> he's well, he's. I don't, I don't know. You don't know his name. He's not a he's not a looker. He's the guy that has to pay for sex. Is yeah, why he's exactly. doing this experiment. Okay, that's, that's, Michael that's what I get. Okay. I just want to spend some money on plastic surgery. <laughs> I was going right. to say, like, you go to the right woman, it's like, baby, you should pay me. <laughs> but if you're not a looker, then maybe, maybe right? not. Um, dude, I don't, I'm trying to look him up because it, he was on Joe Rogan not too long ago, too, like a couple months ago. And he went in, like, deep about his, like, childhood and stuff. It was kind of interesting. That's why I heard about his ball gag <laughs> podcast. <laughs> he was on Joe Rogan, you said? Yeah. Oh, dude, I do want to watch that. This sounds interesting. I like interesting people. Yeah, he's definitely out there. Dude, I can't remember his name, so that, though. Like, I, that's what I would do when, if I was rich, is crazy shit. People would be like, that dude's fucking nuts, <laughs> but he's fun. Yeah, I, w- I would want to do, like, weird stuff, like... Shit that like uh, you know, Elon like, if, Musk does that to like drop his I was gonna say, stock. It, if I had Elon Musk money, like I feel like they're at such a higher level. Here's what I think I would do. So, a lot of people are into shoes, right? Mm-hmm. And that's like a way to show your status, like oh, I have two hundred dollars shoes, whatever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I want to start another trend. For the Elon Musks of the world. <laughs> where shoes are people. What? All right. I want to pay people to be my shoes. They will get <laughs> down on their hands and knees and I step up on them. That and is great. I, there's got to be some way to signal which way I want to go. It shouldn't be too hard. But, you just use a harness, right? Like a, a horse harness on their necks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing. I want it to become a status signal. They're like Nikes are better than the other ones. Like I want my shoes to be Harvard educated, <laughs> and those are better than the college, the uh, state college so, educated so shoes that, 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 that's that, that billionaire is wearing. That's called slave society, okay? I know, but slave they have enough money to do it. Like that's the point. Inequality is so rampant that they could do it. Elon Musk could have Harvard educated people as his shoes, yeah. but hundred people with only a couple hundred million, they'd have to buy from like. I only have, they'd be so upset that they can only afford community college educated shoes. <laughs> that's fucking great. That's, that's the kind of thing I'd do if I had Elon Musk money. That's just me, though. <laughs> exactly. I still, I would love to do that. Oh, his name is David Cho. C H O E. David Cho. Okay, I want to look that up for later. Yeah, definitely listen to his podcast. I don't know if it exists, what kind but of definitely listen would to the Joe Rogan shoes, Zach? That's what I want to know. I want to create this market. People shoes? Yeah. I feel like there could be more outrageous things to do as a, a multi-billionaire. As literally one of the like, richest people. Like what? Them. Like this is at least plausible because people are crazy about their shoes for some reason. I know I never understand it, but... I don't get that either. What is the shoe shoes? thing? Shoes. Chloe, huh? What's the shoe thing? As a woman, you maybe you can explain. Oh, they look nice. Yeah, but no, but like, 
Why do you own 400 pairs and I own two? I don't own well, like, there's pairs. guys you that really more. like shoes, too. Like, Jordans and stuff. Yeah. Like, there was this weird guy market. at the bank I worked with that... Just, just, I just don't think he had anything else to spend his mass amounts on. Because he was a level of, couple levels above me. He was like an architect. And I don't think mm-hmm. he had anything else to spend his money on. So he had shoes, a collection of shoes at work. And he would change them. At work? I thought it was the weirdest fucking thing, yeah. Because Because he wanted to show off his shoes. Because he has some collection of shoes. And by the way, he wasn't competent. This was the but, guy that was, like, when I was like, oh, he was hired during the 90s when there was a boom. And he aged into his position. Ah. Uh, that When they would hire anybody because they knew HTML. And then he's been here 30 years and now he's an architect making a crazy amount of money. And he just buys shoes. And I he think changes there's them in the middle of the day. That's so it's weird. Weird as shit. That's it's somebody really who wants weird. to flaunt his wealth. Like even if I was super wealthy, yes. like I I just don't care to like most things that are flaunty for wealth. I don't care about like our amazing like car or nice shoes. Like, but shoes is that. always a crazy because like people were getting shot in the eighties over Jordan shoes and okay, stuff. Okay, that's crazy. Like I don't, and they're two hundred dollars. They're not even yeah. that expensive. People in the hood, though, two hundred dollars shoes, shoes is a lot. Never understood. Well, see, like I think it's if you're wearing a three thousand dollars shoe, uh, three thousand dollars mm. dress, it probably should go with nine hundred dollars oh, shoe. Yeah, no, no, see, mm. Chloe, you have to explain because you have spent an outrageous amount of money on a shoe for your wedding. Yeah, and I, I still to this day, I don't understand it. It's it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, but why that much? It's not pretty. You can get pretty shoes. Uh, it's the it's money. It's not the same. Yeah, but the, like, it's at some point a shoe, nice. a sixty dollars shoe and a three hundred dollars shoe look the same. Yeah, this is no, a they're, they're different. no, I but, didn't tell you no, they're different. but they're not that much more. Okay, marginally, yes, they are not the worth the amount of marginal improvement. Okay, right? you're paying extra two hundred dollars to get five percent improvement. At, at some point yeah right but i feel like at that but, point you're paying for more of the quality of the shoe for lasting lot. longer so especially for a wedding it doesn't make sense no but that's not what this is this was a sex in the city shoe it was uh, because it had people knew what it was that's so did it have cool. the red bottom or whatever the sort of. whatever no that... that's not i didn't buy the christian Louboutin one i thought that's what it, i thought you told me it was on sex in the city no it's not shit maybe you were that was another one you were comparing oh dude I thought that's, no, are you sure? You Sex and City, that was Jimmy Choo's. No, I didn't buy them. Then I don't really don't understand why this shoe... Because, I mean, it looks nice, but I bet you could get an equivalent pair that also looked really nice for a fraction of that. But that's the shoe she wanted, better. man. It makes you feel better. See? That guy, I bet, was like, changing my shoes in the middle of the day to these nicer ones make me feel better. Yeah. Here's the thing. It's so weird. Like, I don't get it. There are the guys that like to dress in a woman's clothes because they make them feel better. That's true. But, like, no, clothes don't be, like. Here's the thing. I so I worked with all these people. Right. Gun to my head, I couldn't tell you what shoes they were wearing. Yeah. Like even if it were like I was still in you don't work. Care. But other people do. Some people care. And that's the thing. I don't know why. I never understand <laughs> it. It's just the thing that covers your foot. Like. <laughs> Some somebody cares, somebody don't. I mean, it's the same thing, right? It's like some people care about your hiking gear, and you you really no. interested in. See, I don't like those people. One. I can't stand those people. <laughs> yeah, people. people that care about your hiking gear, <laughs> really, really weird. Like just what it, do whatever. Like I'm just you know fucking walking me? up a hill, dude. What would bother me more than like some people? I don't care what their shoes, but what I do notice is if they take their shoes off, because some, especially women, they do. And if they have, you know, I don't know, weird Smelly feet, feet, yeah, mm-hmm. like, eh. Pretty gross. Put those back on. I don't give a shit what kind of shoe you have. Just have a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Just put something on. Yeah. Go hire a couple people from New York to be on your feet. I don't take, care. Do something. Take duct tape and wrap it around your goddamn foot and I'd respect you more. <laughs> duct tape shoes. Oh, my God. <laughs> But then there's some people that just wear Crocs and like, you know, they don't yeah, give a fuck. But like you, you can't yeah. wear Crocs. It's 
you know, it's comfortable. You wear it to go get groceries. That's fine. So I don't notice people's shoes, but I wonder if I would notice and judge people in the office if they wore Crocs. You would. I would. I prob- so You're that's weird. What's to. the psychology there? Because I feel that like is true. I just gave a speech about how I don't give a shit, but then I. But think... But then you think Crocs? You'd be like, "What wearing... the fuck?" Yeah, yeah, if somebody was wearing Crocs, I'd be like, "Something's wrong with you, bro." You don't fit in, right? Like the same thing. You don't wear flip flops into the office. It's for beach. You wear it on the beach. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't wear high heels to the beach. But there's like a thing, though. What? Okay. Okay. Suppose you work at one of the biggest. Suppose you work at Tesla. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Elon Musk walks in wearing Crocs. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. The next week are a lot more employees wearing Everyone's Crocs. Everyone's wearing Crocs Probably. suddenly. <laughs> See, I wouldn't. Uh, but but I also, I couldn't judge Elon Musk for wearing Crocs because it'd be like, dude, he's Elon Musk. He wears Crocs. That's the guy. <laughs> this is the he's new just, thing he he's, does. He's just the guy. Remember the first time... He Bob bought him with Dogecoin. It's cool. The, uh, yeah. the board meeting and he's wearing hoodie. Mm. And he can't do it. Yeah, that's, that's a weird thing. <laughs> it's all about, like, uh, here's my status and I can signal it to you. Yeah, I really yes. wish I uh, suits and stuff weren't a thing. Like, no. Yeah, like, at some point, the fact that you can wear hoodie or you can wear Crocs into the place wherever people are dressed up, it's a power move. Mm. Yeah. You know what a real power move is? People as your shoes. <laughs> I swear, one of these days, Elon Musk is going to be walking in with people on his shoes. He's like, I pay him 40 Dogecoin an hour, all right? Of course they're going to do it. 40 Dogecoin an hour, that's like not even a dollar. <laughs> Dogecoin to the moon. <laughs> So somebody did talk about this being a, a, a waitress or something uh, in, like, Silicon Valley where, like, she really wanted to have not people in suits come in because they don't give big tips. They're not the rich people. She wanted people that came in with, like, the hoodies and regular shoes coming into a nice mm. restaurant because they ended up being the people with, it, like, tons of money and they Silicon tipped. Silicon Valley. Like, I feel like <clears throat> here. Wait, I ain't finished on that. Yeah, like, I don't, like, the the directors I see, mm-hmm. or the people high up VPs, they don't show up in suits. They never seem to be in they suits. They don't dress up. Yeah. At all. Nobody dressed up. It's very different from in Ohio. I get, like, the executives I saw when I worked at a bank in Ohio, the executives were actually in New York City. Mm-hmm. Right, but they would occasionally visit, always in a suit. Yeah, bankers always have to have the presence of. Like, I went business. to my interview in a suit when I was in Ohio because the the company was owned in New York City. But I mean, it's just the culture. But here, I mean, yeah. and you know what? I can't, I can't. I didn't get away with sweatpants. I never tried. I think I could. I think sweatpants is a bit too lousy. I think at least in tech world. Lazy. Y- yeah. You, you at least have to have jeans. jeans. But no. There was a guy that would show up every day. Uh-huh. He worked on another team, a Chinese dude. Sweatpants is way too sloppy. He was in sweatpants. And he was like, um, I don't think he showered often. I'd put it that <laughs> way. Uh... But the thing is, like, he was never going to become a manager. He was a... Uh, tech lead, I think. Uh-huh. I think the point was, like, I'm never going to be a manager and I know it, but I know some obscure stuff and you can't get rid of me. Yeah. Well, I think that's what you have in in that area, the, the tech area, is you have people... You just First off, you just have personalities like that that are like, <laughs> yeah, I don't shower, I don't give a fuck. I'm probably one of the people. I think people probably talk about but, me being a weird, crazy person that says crazy things. Normally, like... <laughs> From the way I see it, is people dress up casually, but it's a big no if you smell. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta take care of your personal hygiene, and somebody will complain. Yeah, yeah. at least, at least shower, like this guy said, chills us over. Maybe I should go sniff over there, but I feel like just looking at him, <laughs> he doesn't take a shower every day. I know, just the greasy. Like he doesn't. He does. Is the hair is missing on top, but on the behind, it looks like you're not. You're not washing that. <laughs> That's <a bit> gross. 
But you know what? If he knows obscure stuff and he can get stuff done, it doesn't I mean, matter. He's got a job. There's a huge shortage. Yeah, that's why Zach's studying JavaScript because he can go in, mm-hmm. you know, dick hanging out, and they'll be like, "Shit!" But he knows that JavaScript, and no one else knows it. <laughs> the very obscure JavaScript. <laughs> That function he wrote that's really convoluted, <laughs> but it works. And we might need him to update it a year from now. The, the necrophilia function. It does something with dashes, I think. <laughs> now that I think about it, like the, the most directors that I know, um, if you see them on the street, they just look like a random dude. Like, Nothing shows a status symbol whatsoever. Like yeah. their clothes, just something you will find that's, in the mall. Nothing the special. When I was in the bank, okay, it's very different from here to the bank in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because, like, I could almost tell you what level a guy was at based on what he, how he dressed yeah. in Ohio. Yeah. Like, I could tell you, like, he's in a suit. He's at least a director. That my manager would always at least have a dress shirt, maybe so a tie. Funny. I would always be like in a polo and khakis, which is the bare minimum requirement. Definitely an engineer. They looked at the manual and they were like, "What's the bare fucking minimum <laughs> I can get away with?" That's what I'm wearing, dude. Why? And That's then, so like, annoying though. Like, why does an engineer have to wear khakis and a fucking polo? Yeah, because I don't meet people. Yeah. But in California. You can't always tell, because I've seen people high up just wear a t-shirt and jeans, but I don't wear see them wear, like, sweatpants or bullshit. I haven't seen them, like, dressed down like that. Yeah, they're casual, but not, like, not sleepwear wear. casual. They will at least have jeans and a t-shirt. Try going in in some pajama pants and, like, fucking slippers. And I, these people can make, like, a million dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah, like, the, uh... The, the CEOs of the big fan company, you see them show up. They are in yeah. jeans, right? In sweaters, Weird shirts, culture, yeah. whatever. You know, they. You don't see them show up in suits. As a matter of fact, I have never seen my company CEO dressed up in suits. I can't even think about one hmm. situation. <laughs> yeah. It was very strange. Steve Jobs always had a turtleneck, right? He yeah, wear he's, a suit. he's turtleneck and also yeah. he wears a jeans. That's almost like the standard. I wonder if he's sort company. of the kind of the send treader, the trendsetter. Trendsetter. I feel like uh, wasn't Zuckerberg Anybody? more like the the big like he always just well, wore a Jobs t-shirt. Was much older, right? Mark, yeah, he always had a hoodie. Mark, a hoodie or a like t-shirt. A yeah. <laughs> it's like he had and a I whole closet. I do think that was a thing. Like mid two thousands, I feel like I did wear more, more hoodies. Dude, I love hoodies. That's what I'm wearing right now, That's actually. Great. I feel like hoodies should just be a, a nice, acceptable gear at all jobs. Like these days, it's a Patagonia vest. They mm-hmm. call it power vest. Power vest. It's just a fleece vest. <laughs> Do you think you could get away with going into your work with the pajama pants? After the pandemic, I'm considering it. <laughs> She's like, bro, to it. I've been working in these for the past like year and a half. My cold quality improved. Uh-huh. <laughs> now you decide. <laughs> <laughs> Your move. What's even the point in bringing you back in the office, though, if you guys can do your job from home? Then you already so, work from home a lot? I would say, like, the bullshit meetings, definitely way better work from home. Yeah. The me- meetings where I actually work close with one technical person very closely, better in person. Yeah. Whenever I have to mm. uh, go on the whiteboard like, to start drawing yeah, stuff. Yeah, debug stuff on screen, that kind of thing. Way better in person. Where you actually need to, like, quickly be discussing stuff instead of sharing a screen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, can you see sense. my screen? Can you see this? Can you see that? Whoa, 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 you're zooming. Oh, no, I got lag. I can't see what screens you're going through. Like, no, not even close to as good as in person. Yeah, yeah. In no, that like, makes sense. Set a breakpoint there. But all the bullshit, like, I love it so much more when there's bullshit meetings and I don't even have to be in person and pay attention, like, even look like I'm paying attention, like, pretend like I'm paying attention. Oh, dude. Yeah. I just don't, 
I like yeah, whatever you say. I, I I have a, like a little alert. If they say mm-hmm. Nick, I say I'm sorry. Uh, you cut out a little bit. What would you just ask? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I do the same thing. I'm almost ninety nine percent of the time when they have a meeting, I mute my mic, and it's a joke that they have. Like Zach never has his mic mic on he just talks in the chat i'm like yeah because i'm fucking watching youtube videos or a fucking amazon movie or something while you're having this you're stupid meeting right now oh, <laughs> things are mistyped because i only have one hand for us it's always mute by default yeah you don't want to hear echoes that's exactly us too is mute by default yeah yeah well my meeting's only that's with like four or five people that. so they're like you know what you should do zach so First, get a bunch of crazy ass MP3s, <laughs> and then say like, "Okay, fine, what is this? fine. Everyone complains 2005? about me being you. Whatever. What I'm saying is, okay, everybody, you unmute and say everybody complains about me being on mute. So I'll unmute, and then in the background, you play these MP3s on your other laptop, and it's like a horse getting fucked. Make it sound like, like World War Three in here. You can think about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just. Play just like some foreign languages of people shouting in the background, <laughs> and you don't shout back. Hey, fuck you! I'm in a goddamn meeting. Shut the fuck up! I will fucking kill you. <laughs> just like you, just have a fucking zoo in the background. Oh, that'd be so fucking funny. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta go back on mute. I was really trying. <laughs> just go back. <laughs> <laughs> just literally have like zoo noises mixed with like war noises <laughs> like fucking Jurassic yeah. Park background yeah have like the atomic bomb <laughs> you know, uh, 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 have war. like fucking news radio from like the 40s playing a more, a more easy to fake one is to uh, record some baby sound oh. and every time you talk it just play the baby sound in the yeah. point and once you don't want to hear somebody, the baby goes, ah! <laughs> and scream like, at the baby. Sorry. I will fucking strangle you, child! I will kill you! <laughs> if you don't shut the fuck up! <laughs> 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 it has the most insane goddamn background noise. Just be like, sorry about my neighbors. <laughs> 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 They're a little wacky. <laughs> Oh, dude, that would be so fucking funny. I almost want to do that as a joke, though, to have the most absurd background noise when I unmute. Like, sorry, that that was my neighbor's. Dude, there was a fucking... I'm pretty sure I heard a gorilla. <laughs> was that a velociraptor? <laughs> <laughs> Just the tap, tap, tap of the velociraptor. <laughs> dude, that would be so fucking good. Oh. Uh. Mm. <sighs> All right, yeah. I probably should get going to bed. All right, we'll end there. All right, I, I, I'm really thinking about doing this as a joke. I'll let you know if I end up I, I, taking that. If you that do record it, so we can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, later. All right, All right. later. later.